Hey guys, welcome to um, welcome to the vlog. Uh, I wanted to share with you today, um, like how quickly the the roulette kind of captured me, um, which sounds a bit like I'm playing the victim and stuff. But yeah, I was just like really, really quickly hooked um, on the roulette machines. Uh, by the way, this is just a phone video. Please excuse any kind of ums and ahs and ramblings, as it were. But um, yeah, uh, leading on a bit from uh, vlog seven, by the way, which was. If you've not seen it, it was a bit more like how I got into gambling, um, you know, during childhood and then uh, set foot in the bookies, um, started on football accumulators, had no luck on that. And then, yeah, got hooked on the roulette machine. And I spoke about my first winning bet in another vlog as well. But yeah, it was just like an instant hook. Um, the buzz I got from the roulette machine was just incredible. Like it was like plugging yourself into the mains. Um, it just seemed really easy as well because... I won my first bet uh, on Black 17, which became my lucky number. Um, and it was just like this relationship between like me and the machine. Um, no one else knew about it. It was like my new found hobby. Um, it was just quite secretive. It, I, I'd always been quite independent as a, as a kid, still class myself quite independent and, and an introvert or an extrovert introvert, if that makes sense. Um, so quite ha happy in my own sort of skin and, and, and things. but. Yeah, the, the roulette machine just, it was like a new hobby, um, this new passion uh, that I started to just do on my own. Um, so I'd gone from going to the bookies every Friday with, with my friends from sick form and um, very quickly uh, just started to go on my own. So as I say, around the age of 18, um, several years ago now. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd learned to drive. I had my own car and um, yeah, I'd, I'd drive to the bookies. And I was earning quite a lot of cash at that time. Um, you know, 18, you don't pay rent, you live at home still and you've got part-time jobs and stuff. So yeah, I was football refereeing as well. So I had like lots of cash in hand. Um, I was earning pretty good money to be fair. I was probably about on 100, 150 quid a week, but was just, yeah, had access to lots of cash and would think, wouldn't think twice about going into a bookies, just nipping in, you know, um, after work or whatever, and just sticking 20 quid in, 30 quid, whatever. Um, I must add that I don't think I was addicted. I don't know. I don't know if I, when I say addicted, I don't know. It's, it's quite hard to describe because it's like I had a diary. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, but yeah, I had a diary and I've looked through the, through the diary entries and it's funny how the mind plays tricks on you because I wasn't going into the bookies every single day. I was only going maybe two or three times a week, but I was going in there and I was spending, yeah, 30, 40 quid just playing the roulette. I didn't care anything, didn't care about anything else about the horse racing or anything. I would kid myself and go into the bookies. I don't know if you ever did this as well, where you went into the bookies and like, it was this, is this if this secret between me and the bookie, um, the person working there, they knew that I was going to go on the machine. But this is funny how the, you, you play this out in your head, but I would go in and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go and do a football accumulator bet, pick up a bet and slip to, to almost like, I don't know, um, I can't think of the word, but almost like make it all right for myself. Like, oh, you know, I'm doing something like just normal, like casual. And then as soon as the uh, roulette machine became a free, I was just like pff, straight on there. Didn't care about the football accumulator. Uh, accumulator. But yeah, um, of course you had to queue up and there'd be lots of you know people around the machines and stuff. And yeah, I was just kind of captivated. Um, sorry, going off on a bit of a tangent, but yeah, it was like, it was the first time I had to lie as well. Um, when I was 18, uh, I got in trouble with the police and uh, my dad called me up and he was like, Alex, you need to get home right now. Uh, basically, the police are here. Um, they're looking for you. Um, I knew exactly what it was about. Um, I shan't say. <laughs> it's quite embarrassing. Um, if you're a friend watching this, the rather you didn't uh, let the whole world know. But... Um, yeah, I knew straight away and I was like, but I was like, shit, I'm actually at the bookies and I've been at the bookies for two hours now, um, just playing the roulette. Um, so I had to go home. I was like bright red. Not only did I feel terrible that obviously I've been in trouble with the police, but um, I then had to lie to my dad about where I'd been. And I've almost got more, what's the word, not satisfaction, that's the wrong word, but the fact that I could pass this lie off, it was the very first time I had to lie where I'd been. And all of a sudden, um, it was like, oh, I got away with that. Uh, well, that 
was actually really easy. Like that was really easy to cover up. Like why was I feeling so bad? Like you know, so uh, weird, weird situation. You know, and then therein started the lying and the secretiveness of it, and I just started to feel a bit kind of cocksure. Like oh, I can get away with things and stuff. But yeah, I was just quite quickly hooked on the roulette machines. Um, later on in my twenties, I was on a uh, stag do in Aintree at the Grand National and. I just remember we were on a like, pub crawl one or two of the days and I was just like half of it I was in the bookies. Um, I remember another time I was at a wedding, half of it I was in the bookies. Um, like I had this kind of compulsion to go off and I just had to get, and that, that was obviously when I was addicted um, and things. But uh, yeah, I don't know how quickly the roulette captured you, particularly the machines, obviously the fixed old betting terminals, they've been reduced now to two pound a spin. Um, I spoke to Matt Zab cousin who was pretty much headed up that campaign uh took him six years but he did it fair play um fair play to him because it kind of took me out the bookies really uh obviously i then went online but um yeah i don't know how quickly the roulette captured you um let me know write me a comment um you know hit me up on social media but uh anyway um i hope you've enjoyed the video uh hopefully you've taken something from it i mean selfishly it's a bit like therapy for me um but uh, yeah, um, all right, guys. I'll catch up with you in with you in the the next vlog. All right, take care. Cheers. Bye.